this. Good evening. Let's read some more. But I'm not ready. Almost ready. Okay, it had closer down. This is open. So I will just go to bed and read about uh, nuclear nuclear weapons. But I need a minute. I need a minute. Oh. Nuclear weapon. Page semi protected. Listen to this article. An assortment of American nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles at National Museum of the United States Air Force. Clockwise front top left. PGM 17 Thor, LGM 25 C Titan II, HGM 25 A Titan I, Thor Agena. LGM 30G Minute Man 3 LGM 118 Peacekeeper LGM 30 A forward slash B forward slash F Minute Man I or 2 PGM 19 Jupiter A nuclear weapon A is an explosive device that derives its destructive force from nuclear reactions, either fission, fission bomb, or a combination of fission and fusion reactions, from a nuclear bomb, producing a nuclear explosion. Both bomb tips release large quantities of energy from relatively small amounts of matter. The first test of a fission atomic bomb released an amount of energy approximately equal to 20,000 tons of TNT, 84 TJ.1. First thermonuclear hydrogen bomb test released energy approximately equal to 10 million tons of TNT, 42 PJ. Nuclear bombs have had yields between 10 tons TNT, the W-54, and 50 megatons for the Tsar bomber, CTNT equivalent. A thermonuclear weapon weighing as little as 600 pounds, 270 kilograms, can release energy equal to more than 1.2 megatons of TNT, 5.0 pj. Dot. Two, a nuclear device no larger than a conventional bomb can devastate an entire city by blast, fire, and radiation. 
Since they are weapons of mass destruction, the proliferation of nuclear weapons is a focus of international relations policy. Nuclear weapons have been deployed twice in war by the United States against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 during World War II. Testing and deployment. Nuclear weapons have only twice been used in warfare, both times by the United States against Japan at the end of World War II. On the 6th of August, 1945, the United States Army Air Forces, USAF, detonated uranium gun-type fission bomb nicknamed Little Boy over the Japanese city of Hiroshima. Three days later, on August the 9th, the USAF, 3, detonated a plutonium implosion-type fission bomb nicknamed Fat Man over the Japanese city of Nagasaki. These bombings caused injuries that resulted in the deaths of approximately 200,000 civilians and military personnel. Four. The ethics of these bombings and their role in Japan's surrender are to this day, still subjects of debate. Since the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nuclear weapons have been detonated over 2,000 times for testing and demonstration. Only a few nations possess such weapons or are suspected of seeking them. The only countries known to have detonated nuclear weapons and acknowledge possessing the mark chronologically by date of first test, the United States, the Soviet Union, succeeded as a nuclear power by Russia, the United Kingdom, France, China, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Israel is believed to possess nuclear weapons, though, in a policy of deliberate ambiguity, it does not acknowledge having them. Germany, Italy, Turkey, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Belarus are nuclear weapons sharing states. 5, 6, b. South Africa is the only country to have independently developed and then renounced and dismantled its nuclear weapons. 7. The Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons aims to reduce the spread of nuclear weapons but there are different views of its effectiveness. 8. Types. The Trinity test of the Manhattan Project was the first detonation of a nuclear weapon, which led J. Robert Oppenheimer to recall verses from Hindu scripture Bhagavad Gita if the radiance of a thousand suns were to burst at once into the sky that would be like the splendor of the mighty one. I am become death the destroyer of worlds. 9. Robert Oppenheimer, principal leader of the Manhattan Project often referred to as the father of the atomic bomb. There are two basic types of nuclear weapons, those that derive the majority of the energy from nuclear fission reactions alone, and those that use fission reactions to begin nuclear fusion reactions that produce a large amount of total energy output. 10. Fission weapons. The two basic fission weapon designs all existing nuclear weapons derive some of the explosive energy from nuclear fission reactions. Weapons whose explosive output is exclusively from fission reactions are commonly referred to as atomic bombs or atom bombs, abbreviated as A-bombs. This has long been noted as something of a misnomer, as their energy comes from the nucleus of the atom just as it does with fusion weapons. In fission weapons, a mass of fissile material, enriched uranium or plutonium, is forced into supercriticality allowing an exponential growth of nuclear chain reactions either by shooting one piece of subcritical material into another, the gun method, or by compression of a subcritical sphere or cylinder of fissile material using chemically fuel lead explosive. Lenses. The latter approach, the implosion method, is more sophisticated and more efficient, smaller, less massive, and requiring less of expensive fissile fuel, than the former. A major challenge in all nuclear weapon designs is to ensure that a significant fraction of the fuel is consumed before the weapon destroys itself. The amount of energy released by fission bombs can range from the equivalent of just under a ton to upwards of 500,000 tons, 500 kilotons, of TNT, 4.2 to 2.1106 GJ, 
Dot 11. All fission reactions generate fission products. The remains of the split atomic nuclei. Many fission products are either highly radioactive, but short-lived, or moderately radioactive, but long-lived, and as such, they are a serious form of radioactive contamination. Fission products are the principal radioactive component of nuclear fallout. Another source of radioactivity is the burst of free neutrons produced by the weapon. When they collide with other nuclei in the surrounding material, the neutrons transmute those nuclei into other isotopes, altering their stability and making them radioactive. The most commonly used fissile materials for nuclear weapons applications have been uranium-235 and plutonium-239. Less commonly used has been uranium-233. Neptunium-237 and some isotopes of americium may be usable for nuclear explosives as well, but it is not clear that this has ever been implemented, and their plausible use in nuclear weapons is a matter of dispute. 12. Fusion weapons. The basics of the Teleumum design for a hydrogen bomb. A fission bomb uses radiation to compress and heat a separate section of fusion fuel. The other basic type of nuclear weapon produces a large proportion of its energy in nuclear fusion reactions. Such fusion weapons are generally referred to as thermonuclear weapons or more colloquially as hydrogen bombs, abbreviated as H bombs. Ast Hay rely on fusion reactions between isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. All such weapons derive a significant portion of their energy from fission reactions used to trigger fusion reactions, and fusion reactions can themselves trigger additional fission reactions. 13. Only six countries the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, China, France, and India have conducted thermonuclear weapon tests. Whether India has detonated a true multi-staged thermonuclear weapon is controversial. 14. North Korea claims to have tested a fusion weapon as of January 2016 though this claim is disputed. 15. Thermonuclear weapons are considered much more difficult to successfully design and execute than primitive fission weapons. Almost all of the nuclear weapons deployed today use the thermonuclear design because it is more efficient. 16. Thermonuclear bombs work by using the energy of a fission bomb to compress and heat fusion fuel. In the Teleunum design, which accounts for all multimegaton yield hydrogen bombs, this is accomplished by placing a fission bomb and fusion fuel, tritium deuterium, or lithium deuteride in proximity within a special radiation reflecting container. When the fission bomb is detonated gamma rays and X-rays emitted first compress the fusion fuel, then heat it to them at nuclear temperatures. The ensuing fusion reaction creates enormous numbers of high-speed neutrons, which can then induce fission in materials not normally prone to it, such as depleted uranium. Each of these components is known as a stage, with the fission bomb as the primary and the fusion capsule as the secondary. In large megaton range hydrogen bombs, about half of the yield comes from the final fissioning of depleted uranium. 11. Virtually all thermonuclear weapons deployed today use the two stage design described to the right but it is possible to add additional fusion stages each stage igniting a larger amount of fusion fuel in the next stage. This technique can be used to construct thermonuclear weapons of arbitrarily large yield. This is in contrast to fission bombs, which are limited in their explosive power due to criticality danger, premature and nuclear chain reaction caused by too large amounts of pre-assembled fissile fuel. The largest nuclear weapon ever detonated, the Tsar Bomber of the USSR, which released an energy equivalent of over 50 megatons of TNT, 210 PJ, was a three-stage weapon. Most thermonuclear weapons are considered lightmiller than this, due to practical constraints from missile warhead space and weight requirements. 
17. In early 1950s the Livermore Laboratory in the United States had plans for the testing of two massive air bombs, Miller and Sundial, one gigaton of TNT and ten gigatons of TNT respectively. 18. 19. Edward Teller, often referred to as the father of the hydrogen bomb fusion reactions do not create fission products, and thus contribute far less to the creation of nuclear fallout than fission reactions, but because all thermonuclear weapons contain at least one fission